Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, June 27th, 2017 edition of the Sand and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Columbia, Maryland. BitTorrent, of course, often plays a role in forensics investigation as it is kind of a neat tool in order to exfiltrate data. Now, today we have a nice guest diary by Ali Dekandana about one particular implementation, BitTorrent Sync, which also is now known as Resilio. In his blog post, uh, Ali is going over some of the artifacts that he discovered on systems that did run Bit torrent sync version 2.0 now this is the first part of a multi-part post that he prepared that goes over different aspects of the forensic artifacts that you are finding as residual evidence for BitTorrent Sync 2. The next uh, blog actually and hopefully we'll get to publish this maybe later this week or early next week will cover some of the log files left behind. I think it was uh, last week that South Korean web hosting company Nayana went public about paying one million dollar in order to avert a DDoS attack. Now, sadly and somewhat predictable, uh, this has uh, started a new wave of uh, ransom DDoS attacks against a number of banks in South Korea. Now, the name mentioned uh, with uh, these ransom demands is the Armada Collective. Armada Collective uh, was quite active in the ransom DDoS uh, scheme about two years ago or so. I considered the group pretty much defunct since then. There were a lot of fake ransom demands, like the ones I talked about on Friday and yesterday. So not sure if this is just a new group that sort of took over that name, or if it's again you know, just fake ransom demands. We'll find out, I guess, and see whether or not these banks will actually be attacked. The group did demand in the order of $300,000 from these banks in order to avert the DDoS attack. Banks, of course, typically have a quite strong anti-DDoS defenses given past history where banks were always kind of at the top of the list when it came to large DDoS attacks. It looks like drivers caught in some areas of Australia by speed trap cameras will get away without a fine thanks to WannaCry or possibly some similar ransomware or malware. In this particular case, the cameras were not infected over the network. Instead, a contractor apparently infected the cameras while upgrading them using a USB stick. So they literally went from camera to camera, plugged in the same USB stick, and by doing so, spread this malware to all of these cameras. Looks like around 200 or so of the cameras are infected. And due to them, of course, now being unstable, rebooting, and not really being reliable enough in order to collect evidence, any fines that were issued due to images from these cameras have been revoked. And I'm not sure if uh, the next uh, item is actually new or if I already talked about it. There are just two many of these Windows Defender vulnerabilities that Tavis Armandy came across over the last few months. So yes, uh, yet another one and make sure that you download the latest signature release that will include any patches that Microsoft has released for Windows Defender. What's probably more interesting than the individual bugs is how Tavis sort of managed to find them. And that's in part by being able to run the Windows Defender in Linux. And in Linux, he was able then to instrument it with the necessary fuzzers in order to find these flaws. So I think the technique here is probably the more innovative and interesting part. Just the, the individual vulnerabilities, uh, probably nice that they got found, but uh, hopefully Microsoft will adopt some of the techniques that Tavis demonstrated here in order to find more flaws on their own. 
And if you're familiar with Node.js, then you probably heard about NPM, the Node Package Manager. NPM is a very convenient, automatic way to install and maintain libraries that your code depends on. Sadly, developers that write code and deposit an NPM aren't always that careful with their passwords. Turns out that some passwords were found in the packages themselves. Others were published on GitHub as part of other projects or simply reused. So passwords that were leaked in prior breaches on other sites could be used in order to update a developer's code. All of this, of course, is dangerous because now anybody can, for example, sneak malware into these packages. Luckily, the NPM project was somewhat proactive here. They disabled access for uh, these uh, leaked accounts, so uh, these developers now have to go through a password reset. And let's hope that they didn't use the same password they use everywhere else for uh, their email client or whatever other way will be used in order to reset passwords. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.